Do you know what time it is? That's right. It is happy hour with the Lincoln Tom. I think we're on episode number 56 already, where week by week I'll do my best to answer all of your stock market related questions. So if you're sitting there right now and you're saying, man, I've got a great question that the trading community needs and demands an answer to, do me a favor. Right here's the email. Send it to support at the LincolnList.com. I'll do my best to get it on some of these upcoming episodes. Also, if you need help and you're sitting there still saying to yourself, I want to become a professional trader. How do I become a professional trader? How do I make this a lifelong career? Right here. Visit our live trade room. It's the link. Click on it. It'll take you directly to it. And you can start trading with us right away. And also don't forget, like I've been saying over the last couple weeks as well, we're going to be doing our mini camp course coming up here. You've got one week left to register. I shall place the link somewhere upon this screen. Check it out if you're interested in taking your trading education to the next level. Now, I've got a special surprise for you before we start. I know it's been eons since we've done a whiskey review, and I'm really not going to do one of those right now. But I have to share something with you very spectacular, which you may have seen in the glass. The other day, I picked me up some of this Japanese Suntory Hibiki. Now, a while back, I did a review on Suntory Toki, which I loved. This here I picked up at Costco, of all places, for 60 freaking dollars. 60 freaking dollars for this stuff. Because I've been hearing, you know, Japanese whiskey, especially this Hibiki, is, you know, they're running out. The demand is so high. But that's on the 12 and the 17 year. So what they did was they come up with this little, I might be a little bit off on this, but like a blended whiskey here. They call it Japanese Harmony. Man, let me tell you something, peeps. If you are a fan like I am of the Eilie brands of scotch, the ones that have that really strong, smoky, peaty flavor like Lagavulin, Ardbeg, Laphroaig, a lot of ones I featured on Happy Hour before, you will fall in love with this. This stuff is so smooth, so peaty. It is awesome. I'm almost afraid to drink it. Like it's special occasion scotch. Only 60 bucks. And I feel like it's delicate, like I'm holding it, like it's a little baby in the manger, wrestling its neck, just gently on my hand, comforting this soft, sweet bottle. So anyway, all kidding aside, Hibiki, no joke. Would love to get my hands on a 12 and 17 year. Don't know if I want to up pay it now because the stuff's getting really pricey. Enough of that. You came here to learn. I'm here to teach. So let's get down to our first couple of questions. Here's question number one. Okay, question number one. Doug, I've had a rough go at trading this year. My account has gone from 35000 down to 5500 Every time I lose money, I get more conservative, but I end up losing more because I stop out so fast. Or like you say in your videos, take profits too soon. How do I program my brain to trade on a small amount of money? or little money, no money at all. All right, first I have to address the elephant in the room when it comes to this question, okay? You don't need to know how to trade on small money right now. You need to figure out how to trade in the first place. Something, and I'm not picking on you, whoever you are. I've been in a very similar situation. That's why I have this question on here. You know, judge not, least ye be judged yourself. That has been my motto for long periods of time in my life, but something bad has happened to go from 35,000 down to five, you know, and, and I kind of remember being in that situation because you think the warning signs and signals are, well, what happened when you were at 28? What happened when you were at 22? You know, when did you put the brakes on this? So somewhere in this whole equation, you have failed to get education. Now, I did that same thing. You've heard people, you guys have heard my story. I'm not going to bore everyone with it, but I went through a very similar situation like this in you know 2001 but it was more like 160,000 to zero so so it was a lot more and i ignored all the signs on the way down because what had happened is when things started to turn sour as they will for every single trader there was one key element that i had never never planned i never planned for it i never thought about plan b or plan C, or what will I do, or do like have stop losses in effect, have just certain money management rules in, in, in effect, because somewhere while you were losing this money, you needed to stop, and maybe, maybe you did. You needed to stop, and you needed to educate yourself and get some help. 
if, that, if, if you wanted to continue to pursue trading. Now I'm figuring you're either really wanting to pursue trading or you got an ego issue here that's causing you to fight back just naturally. Again, not judging, I've been in that situation. So that's the elephant in the room. Obviously, you need to have some money management and you needed to stop trading and get some education. You know, a lot of people out there bitch and moan about educational costs. They complain about that everybody selling education is out there to do harm. We're not out to do freaking harm. We're out, this, this is harm. That right there in that email, that's freaking harm, you know? And you may never recover from that. So en enough of that part. Let's move on to the next. Because maybe you're in a situation where it's not going to get to this level. But you're still in the mental situation of where your account is hot under this light. My apologies. But you're in the, the situation where your account is dwindling down and you start to get into this mental mode of conservative trading, right? Protect account, account protection. And there comes a time where you are, as a trader, which we've discussed before, you are in a survival mode. You have to be, be think of survival, not grenading your account. So when it, the question comes up is how do you trade on small money? Well, the truth be told, you trade the same amount on small money as you do big money doesn't matter how much money you have, the way that you trade should never change. If you're good, if you're bad, this goes back to you have to figure out why am I a bad, why am I a bad trader? Okay. Now, again, when we talk about this, I say bad, it doesn't mean you're a hideous human being that is incapable of achieving such a goal. It just means that you are making a mistake, either, you know, subconsciously or consciously, and you need to address that. So my very first order of business, if you are feeling like you're in a constant rut, okay, and you're struggling, the first thing that you must do if you're so compelled to trade is you have got to get rid of the size. I know if you followed me for longer than 10 minutes, you know how I talk about position size as one of the biggest keys to me turning my career around and becoming a successful trader. I don't care what the size is, but you've got to get the size down low enough to where the emotions are not overriding your decisions because this is what happens. You get stopped out too soon. That's, that's classic number one. You get stopped out too soon. You take two profits too early. That is a position size issue. Position size. Get rid of the, the freaking high size positions and that will fix itself, okay? But when you're struggling like that, you need to step back for a moment, okay? And think about where am I going wrong? See, a lot of traders will just say, well, well I, made a, I made a mistake. Again, apologize, it's hot. I made a mistake because it was a losing trade. Now, that doesn't mean it was a mistake, okay? You need to figure out where, where, where am I going wrong in my trading? Because there's three, three things, right? I have an idea, I execute my idea, then I manage the idea. Where am I going wrong in this? That's all, that's all there is to this. Where am I going wrong in this? Do I have good ideas or am I just taking other people's ideas, guessing on certain things. You know, what am I doing? And do I have legit ideas that are part of a process and part of a system? Now, once I have those ideas, am I executing them to the best of my ability? Am I, am I not second guessing myself? Am I not chasing my entries? Am I not screwing that up? And then the third biggest component, of course, is what am I doing after that? Am I have the ability to recognize when this trade has the potential to be a multi-day runner, a big winner, and I hold, I stick to my guns, and I don't get shaken out, and I hold. Do I have the ability to recognize as quickly as possible that this trade sucks, and I need to get out of it before it turns into something I cannot recover from, okay? Because remember, our confidence is a very fragile thing. We have to have this as traders. This is very, very important for us to have confidence. If we don't have confidence, we are not going to make any money. And we're all going to go through some periods of self-doubt, rough times. You know, I, I still do it to this day. But step number one, first of all, guys, if you're struggling real bad against better, just, just against your better thought of how you think about the world, get some freaking help. It doesn't have to be for me. F find somebody to help you before you decimate your account because once you get to this point the odds are stacked against you so much that once you learn how to trade you may never be able to overcome the psychological damage i've been exactly in that it's a practical miracle that i was able to come back from where i was at that's why i share my stories with people but if the, the, the deck is stacked against you once you've done that much damage you're going to have a sour taste in your mouth about stocks and trading you're going to have a really negative outlook on things and even when you learn to trade, you're still going to have that baggage. I still, I still have it today, 20 years later, 
after it. You know, 20 years later, it's still on my back about making certain mistakes every, every so often. So you got to stop. You got to get some education. You got to take your time with this whole trading thing. Otherwise, it's not going to work. When you start to lose a lot of money, that's what you got to do. Now, when you get down to a certain level, it's about building a rhythm again. It's not about making money. It's just getting into a rhythm. It's getting consistent with your trades, idea, execution, management. Get consistent with it. And be patient. And things should slowly start to turn around and you can begin to put size in it. Hope that got, helps you out there. Let's move on to another question. Okay, our next question is, hey, thank you for all you do in the trading community. Why, you are welcome. I have a question as a trader for so many years. Do you see anything anymore that baffles you or that you haven't seen before? Keep up the good work. Why, thank you for the kind compliments. Do I see anything that baffles me? Well, market-related, no. Because a long time ago, I got over this whole thing of I don't expect anything from the market. I mean, I've really, I don't know how many days 20 years is in terms of, of actual days. I'd have to factor that up in my head and I'm just not willing to do right now. But I've seen thousands of market opens. Must have made well over 100,000 trades throughout my whole entire career. Some I remember, some I, I don't remember. But throughout all of that Time. This is why we talk about being in front of the screen, you know, build you know, that screen time and how, why it's so important is because I believe through all of that, I've seen all I'm going to see. There's nothing that the market is going to do that's going to surprise me and, and, and shock me. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just not. I've, I've been through crashes. I've been through flash crashes. I've been through recessions. I've been through booms, busts and all of that. And, you know, they all kind of operate the same. It all goes through this kind of cycle. It's what the market does. And it's just going to do whatever it wants to do. So every day that I get up, I don't expect anything from it. You know, and I've always said that as a trader, I'll let the market do what it wants to do. And then I'll act accordingly. Now, if I can say one thing that baffles me about the job itself, well, obviously, you know, th this, this whole internet boom about every place that you can go on the globe now with this whole social media and all of that kind of stuff, that you now have the ability to work anywhere. You know, what, what I wouldn't do to be 22 years old again, I'd be like a lot of those people on Instagram floating across the world, doing all that kind of good stuff. But it's just amazing that with the advancement of the internet, okay, this is allowing, you know, not just people like us who trade for a living and have to, to go everywhere, because I've traded on vacations before and traded around the world, but it's allowing people from other less privileged countries, you know, with money being so easy to get with certain prop firms and trading capital and stuff like that and access to internet, it's allowing a lot of these people from other countries to participate and it's given them a whole different type of revenue stream. I mean, our room is filled with people all across Europe and different kinds of countries and it's just amazing to, to build this whole entire network of people all around the world. It's like the world is, is shrinking, but to me, that's something that baffles me. It's just opened up the door to this whole kind of new millionaire, this whole kind of new way of doing business, which it's, it, it amazes me. And it also amazes me that what we do sometimes does not seem real. You know what I mean? There was a time when you bought stock and it was delivered to you like three days later in a certificate, you know? It was like that. And when I first started trading, like I said, it was in fractions. Orders were slow. It wasn't like that. I mean, really, it's almost video game-esque. You know, it's definitely not. But it feels like that sometimes because all you do is you just push buttons. And that, that's all you're doing. You, know, you hit this button, hit that button, hit this button, hit that button. And, and the money's there. It's either gone or it's, it, it, it's, it's not there. And sometimes it doesn't seem real. That's why I always say for you guys that do pretty good with your trading, you got to pay yourself. Otherwise, it's just numbers on a screen. It doesn't really feel like it exists. So... If I could say what baffles me, that's the two things that baffle me the most. Is, is, is Number one is how the internet and the advancement of the internet into other countries have allowed so many people who otherwise years ago would have never had this kind of opportunity in front of them. And that just doesn't mean third world countries or other countries. That's people like us too. I mean, you, again, you've heard my story before. I didn't have a college degree. You know, I was a failed motorcycle store owner that had a, a, a bum business. So, you know, it's, it, as long as you've got the 
I don't want to say the ability. That's what I was going to say. If you have the willpower and the tenacity, you know, this is another beautiful thing. The market doesn't give a damn about who you are. I mean, it doesn't care about the color of your skin. It doesn't care about your religion. It doesn't care about what you did past, where you graduated in order of your, your class, what kind of grades you got in school. It does not care. It's a new day. So if you're sitting there wondering, do I have the capabilities because I've been a loser my whole life or people think I can't do it. I've said that before. Shut up and go for it. Commit to saying this. I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get educated. I'm going to figure out how to do it. I'm going to make it work. If it takes me the rest of my life, if I have to get another job. I'm going to make this thing work. So that baffles me. Everybody now has just, it really is an incredible time to be alive, to be honest with you. Everybody has such great, most people I should say, have great opportunities in front of them. I mean, if you just put in some effort, man, life is really freaking good. You know, even the stuff we complain about, you know, and just sitting here pushing a button, it's, it's amazing. I would have never, ever, ever in my lifetime imagined it would be like this. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. Just doing two questions, not a big deal. Just wanted to chit chat, get it out there and get going. Don't forget, man, this stuff is dope. I love this stuff. So if you get a chance, Costco, 60 bucks. You can't, you can't go wrong. But if you're broke, spend your 60 bucks on education. High dollar whiskeys will come later. It's really not that big of a deal. You can live without this, but you must further your career. All right, guys, until the next happy hour, I thank you for watching. Take care and cheers.